Thanks, Riaz. Good morning. We begin in Surrey this morning, where a pedestrian has been hit and killed by a large truck at 196th and Fraser Highway. Our reporter, Greg Harper, is on the scene with the latest. Greg? Jody, we're here in the uh, Langley Bypass in between 192nd and the Fraser Highway where the investigation continues. Uh, minutes ago, the coroner arrived here and the body of the victim has been removed uh, from the road and the investigation here uh, is ongoing. Few details at this point. This is what we know so far. According to police, a pedestrian was struck and killed here uh, just after 3 o'clock this morning. It was a hit and run. There was a witness who did give a, a description of the vehicle to police. It is a semi truck that police are looking for without a trailer. It's a bobtail cab, uh, some blue on the front of it, some silver on it as well. And that's all that we know at this point. Again, a pedestrian was struck and killed here uh, just uh, after three o'clock this morning in a hit and run. Police looking for a semi truck without a trailer on the back, uh, blue on the front of it and some silver as well. It's described to be a bobtail cab. If you have any information, uh, contact Surrey RCMP. Jody. All right, thank you very much. Greg Harper reporting live for us this morning. Seems to be a summer problem that is just not going away. Another child has fallen from a window. A three-year-old girl was airlifted to hospital yesterday afternoon after falling from a second-story window in Langley. The girl reportedly landed on her head on the concrete. She is expected to be okay, but will remain in hospital for a while yet. Last month, a two-year-old boy died after falling from a second-story window of a Maple Ridge home. Parents are reminded to use child-proof locks on windows whenever possible. Abbotsford police are not getting cooperation after a single car crash yesterday. A 19-year-old man died when the vehicle lost control and flipped into a ditch on Town Line Road. Three other young men survived, but they're not saying much to investigators. Police believe speed and alcohol may have played a role in the accident. At this point in time, we're trying to get information from the three surviving occupants of the vehicle, what each each role was as far as uh, them being in the vehicle as to who was a passenger and who was the driver. Three Japanese tourists are pretty embarrassed this morning after causing some travel headaches in Vancouver. They left their backpacks near the payphones at Pacific Central Station while they went sightseeing. The unattended bags forced the station to close for almost three hours yesterday afternoon, delaying trains and buses. One train had to be stopped on the track several kilometers from the station. The bomb squad scanned the bags, which contained camping gear, including fuel, pots and pans. While we, we do have the resources to deal with it, we had dozens of officers here today dealing with the situation and a lot of people that were inconvenienced, trains and buses that were unable to get in or out of the station, and a lot of passengers that are uh, sitting waiting for several hours. Police planned on having a good talk with the tourists, but no charges are expected. Vancouver beaches are great places to see and be seen, but the city's health officials have their eyes on the water. The fecal coliform count at Sunset Beach has risen to 180. That is higher than normal, but short of the 200 mark, which comes with a public warning. Bacteria levels in False Creek are actually much higher, but it's not normally used for swimming. Coliform is typically blamed on waste from boats and birds. The weather is not helping. We need rain to help clean the water. There's more activity on the beaches, uh, more families there, more children. Um, you know, infants in the water, um, you know, so there's, there are multiple potential uh, contamination points or contamination sources, um, you know, in weather conditions that, are, that encourage beach use. The water advisory has been lifted for the Kootenai River after a fuel spill almost two weeks ago, but the do not use order remains in effect for the Slocan River and Lemon Creek. A truck carrying jet fuel crashed and spilled 35,000 litres of the fuel into the area. Cleanup operation continues there. You may not consider a TransLink bus the most romantic way to get around, but a Vancouver couple found it to be the perfect way to be transported into their new life together. Jared Greff and Nina Schmidt chose to tie the knot in the hallowed aisle of the number three bus, the same number they met on last April. Guests were invited to a church wedding and then were surprised when they were ushered out to the bus for the actual ceremony. The nuptials took place in the midst of TransLink's I Love Transit Week. 
April 18th, 2012. Uh, Nina was running to catch the bus, and I was late for work. And uh, we hopped on the same number three going south on Main Street. What a cool story. That is two bus romance weddings in the last week. We'll talk more about those coming up in the show. Time to talk some sports now. Over we go. Actually, no, let's go to Rogers Cup, shall we? Is that where we're going here? Right, so all five Canadians will see action today at the Men's Rogers Cup Tennis Tournament in Montreal. Jesse Levine will be in the toughest match when he takes on the four-seeded Rafael Nadal. Yesterday saw Milos Raonic, Vasek Pospisil, Philip Pelowo and Frank Dancevich uh, all win their opening round matches in three sets. The women are playing their tournament in Toronto where Canadians Eugenie Bouchard and Sharon Fitchman are into the second round. And in Nova Scotia, the Canadian Little League Championships are underway at Glace Bay. White Rock defeated the Maritimes 10-0 in four innings yesterday, improving to four wins, no losses. Right, team BC Canada. plays the host team, Glace Bay, and later Rock, today. Seven, Gotta love the Little League. Get in there, dude.